Hi there, back again here with me Rati in Mami Beluga Investing. This video is a part of Singapore Street Times Index where I discuss STI constituent. Today I'm discussing Jardin Cycle and Carriage with stock symbol C07. My quick take for this company are first, currently it seems to be relatively cheap with respect to their financial. Two, a very prudent management. Three, no or slow growth, even though it has been expanding and diversifying. Four, I will not take any direct position as the single price is beyond my cash capability. So how did I come up with the conclusion? Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to get more of the same kind of contents. Okay. A quick disclaimer, this is an amateur video. My main intention is to record my own journey, learning and practicing investing from scratch. This video shouldn't replace any financial advice and neither suggestion to take a position, buy or sell in the stock market. Please conduct your own research before making any decision. Feel free to put your comments, criticism and suggestions in the comments section below. Now, let's have a quick look at the company's profile. According to its website, Jardin history can be traced back to the year 1899. It's not 1999, okay? It's 1899 through a store in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia named the Federal Stores. Later, it was renamed Cycle and Carriage, but the year wasn't mentioned in the website. In 1918, Cycle and Carriage registered as a private limited liability company in the Federated Malay States. And then, eight years later, in 1926, Cycle and Carriage was incorporated as a public company along with moving its headquarters to Singapore. In the year of 1969, Cycle and Carriage was formed and listed on the Stock Exchange of Malaysia and Singapore. After acquiring the majority stock of several companies later, including Cold Storage Malaysia and Astra International Indonesia, and also obtaining dealership for various brands, including Mercedes brands and Kia. Cycle and Carriage in 2002 then became a subsidiary of the Jardin Medicine Group as Jardin Strategic Holdings increased its stake to over 50%. Then in 2004, the company was then renamed Jardin Cycle and Carriage as its current name. Uh, following the integration into the Jardin Medicine Group. The company continuously grew through its subsidiaries, new partnership and acquisitions. Among those moves, uh, there's an acquisition of a uh, stock of the REE or Refrigeration Electrical Engineering Corporation. It is a diversified Vietnamese group. And then there's also an acquisition of C Siam City Cement, SCCC stock the second largest cement manufacturer in Thailand. And then there's also establishment of cycle and carriage Myanmar. Okay, so it's a huge company which has a long history. The group has 50.1% interest in Astra, a diversified group in Indonesia, which is the largest independent automotive group in Southeast Asia. In 2009, this group invested in total $250 million in one of Indonesia's ride-hailing company, Gojek. Apart from Astra, JCNC also owned 46.2% per of the stake of Tuna Sri Dian, a motor business in Indonesia. In Singapore, Malaysia and Myanmar, the company has full stake at cycle and carriage businesses which managed by Jardin International Motors. JCNC also has significant interest in Vietnam including 26.6 in Throng Hai Auto Corporation. Okay, hope I pronounced the name uh, accurately. And then 29.8% in Refrigeration Electrical Engineering Corporation as I mentioned before and Vina Milk. 10.6% in Vina Milk. Then it's 25.5% uh, owned Siam City Cement, as I mentioned before, 
also has a presence in South Vietnam in addition to operating in Thailand, Sri Lanka, Cambodia and Bangladesh. So it's getting clearer for me that this company is huge. On the screen we have JCNC to see uh, its uh, footprint. On the screen we have JCNC Southeast Asia footprints which covers Myanmar, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore and Indonesia. Currently, JCNC is an investment holding company of the Jardine Medicine Group in Southeast Asia. Okay. JCNC annual report listed Astra, which is a holding company in Indonesia, as the main contributor of its underlying profit. In terms of ownership, 75% of JCNC stock is owned by the Jardine Medicine Group. Okay. So we can see like where the money come from, what is this company, where it's uh, location. So that was a brief look at the company. Now let's look at its performance. So here I plotted JCNC earning per share for the last 11 years. I also added a horizontal green dash line as a guide to zero level earnings. Below this line indicate that the company is recording a loss for that particular year. Okay, so now let's look at what's going on with JCNC EP. First of all, JCNC did not record any loss for the last 11 years. Okay, at least based on the data that I have here. At a glance, the EPS history for the last 11 years show a downward earning trends with two notable spikes in 2017 and 2019. There was a dip in 2018. As we can see here, it's quite deep. JCNC attributed the dip to the adoption of a new accounting standard. The new standard requires the, okay, uh, this is going to be long, okay? The new accounting standard uh, requires the unrealized gains and losses arising from the revaluation of equity investments at the end of each financial period to be included in the profit and loss account. As a result, in 2018, the non-trading losses of, okay, I'm going to say the number, 438 million US dollars was recorded. Those losses JCNC claimed to be principally unrealized fair value losses related to non-current investments. Okay, what does it mean? So it's like the drop in your portfolio value, which represents a loss on paper. It will become actual losses if you sell it at a loss. Okay. Okay, then there's a dip in 2020. It was the effect of the, as we know, the ongoing pandemic. Okay, so that was the company's profitability. We can see a general downtrend. Now we can see what will be the perks or what was the perks of become, becoming a shareholder. Let's look at the dividend history. To see the sensibility of dividend payout. So here I plotted three layers of information. The first one is the dividend payout over the last 11 years, which I plotted as uh, red round markers here, dots here, yeah, or markers connected by a thick red line, as we can see on the screen here. On each of the points, I have annotated with two numbers. The numbers above the markers are the dividend payouts in Singapore dollars, and the ones below are the payout ratios to the year's earning per share. As a comparison to the earnings here, I plotted back the earnings here as a thinner red line. We can see on the screen. At the glance, JCNC is really sensible in their dividend payout, as we can see here. From the record that we have here, payout ratio was always proportional and less than 50% of their earnings. There's, there was a 83 payout ratio in 2018, which is quite striking here. Uh, as the company noted, that was due the, to the paper loss recorded in that year. So it wasn't actually really 83% payout ratio in that sense. 
Okay, it seems like the cash situation was not affected, that the dividend level were more or less the same as the previous year or 2017. The payout in 2020 was also scaled down due to the decrease in their earnings, which I think it is a very prudent decision. So far, I like what I see. Now, uh, let's see whether the price makes sense to me. Okay, to see the market valuation of JCNC, here I plotted four layers of information. They are, okay, the first one is the price, which represents the market valuation of the company. It's also the easiest information that I can obtain. I can just use the search term Jardian Cycle and Carriage and it will pop me with this graph. Uh, but price alone sometimes misleading for the value of the company and its prospects. So I'll include some fundamental indicators to help me to decide. The second layer of information here is the 10 times earning multiply, which here I plotted as a dashed green line. 10 times earning multiply can be considered as the price where the price to earning, that is the PE ratio, is 10. For me, I consider 10 times earning multiply has two purposes. The first one is that it indicates the price where I expect, where I have higher chance to break even within 10 years. You could plot five times earning multiply if your investment horizon is five years. Yeah, okay, the second one is as a consequence for the first reason, I'll consider share price above 10 earning multiply to be expensive. The third layer of information that we have on the screen here is the 15 times earning multiply. With the same principle as 10 times earning multiply, price above this indicator will be deemed as expensive. Here I plotted the 15 times earning multiply as a dashed yellow line, just like the traffic light. I'll start feeling nervous if the price crosses this line, particularly for non-growth company. The fourth layer of information is the 20 times earning multiply. Here I plotted as a dashed red line. I will consider the share price to be super, super expensive it, if it ever crossed this line. For non-growth company, I consider to cut down my position if this happened. Okay, so now let's see what's going on with JCNC share price. Looking at the fundamental indicator, I think at the moment when I prepared this video, JCNC seems to be fairly valued. It was undervalued till 2012, but after that, the share price have been following its 10 times earning multiply. As from 2020 earnings, the 10 times earning multiply is about $18, while as of 25th of June, 2021, when I prepared this video, the market valued it around $21 per share. Not that far. Considering the ongoing pandemic, unlikely that earning will recover soon, which may lead to further price decrease if the market behaving behaving rationally. So if I have to put a buy limit order, I'll feel comfortable to place it at $18 per share or even less. Okay. Okay, so in conclusion, currently it seems to be relatively cheap with respect to their financial. Two, a rather prudent management. Three, the company is in no or slow growth phase even though it has been expanding and diversifying. But by no means, it, it will be always like this, considering how aggressive the group has been and its subsidiaries too, in doing acquisition and making other business moves in Southeast Asia. Looking at how big it is and its presence in various sectors and geographical location in Southeast Asia, I'm interested in making a small position. However, I won't make direct position just yet, as the single lot price is still beyond my cash capability. So it's probably time to save for me. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave comments and please subscribe to my channel. See you again in the next video. Bye!